welcome to a mini episode of Casey's Musings, and I apologize that I don't have a full-length podcast for you today, but life has been a little bit busy lately, and I thought it was better to do a mini episode than none at all, although I am planning on sitting down hopefully this weekend and working on a longer episode, um, and also including a really awesome giveaway, which I'm super excited about, so stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, I wanted to do a short video about my new toy, aka my spinning wheel. If you follow me on social media, you may have seen that I got a Spinolution Polywog for my birthday slash Mother's Day in May. And I've been sitting on this for about six weeks now. I am still very much a complete novice wheel spinner. Um, I'm a novice spinner in general but definitely a novice wheel spinner, but I'm having so much fun on this wheel, I just wanted to share it with y'all. Um, if you follow me for any length of time, you may have um, heard me speak about the fact that I've been drop spinning off and on for the past three years, more off than on. To be honest, drop spinning has just never quite captured me like wheel spinning has, um, and I suspected all along that this would be the case, that I would get on a wheel and not look back. Um, but just kind of the cost of a wheel, plus not being sure about how interested in wool spinning I was, deterred me for a long time um, from buying a spinning wheel, but it's something I've wanted to do since I was a child. Um, my mom had books on Tasha Tudor, and I was very interested in fashion and textile history growing up, so in the back of my head, the idea of wheel spinning and seeing pictures of Tasha Tudor spinning on a big antique walking wheel just really ignited that little spark in me to eventually one day get my hands on my own spinning wheel. Um, the Polywog is a very small, compact wheel. It is specifically marketed towards younger spinners or the young at heart, as they like to say. I chose it um, because it is a small wheel, and we live in a very small apartment don't have a whole lot of room and I didn't want something that was larger and was going to be in the way and not be easy for me to take out of the living area and put away in my craft room so that the kids can get to it. I'm sorry if you hear my dog in the background. Um, I had to put him away because there's other dogs outside right now and he's going nuts because he knows there's other dogs outside. Um, so yeah, so that's why I chose this one and I've been having a blast spinning on it. I'm trying to spin about 15 to 20 minutes every day if I can manage it. Doesn't always happen, but I feel like it's a good day if I finally get that done and it's something I can do while uh, my baby's napping or once the kids go to bed in the evening. trying to read and study, watch videos, look into online classes, all that kind of stuff as much as I am able at the moment. I feel like there's so much information out there, it's slightly overwhelming, but at the same time I've been having a lot of fun researching and just absorbing as much as I possibly can. I have some books on the way to sit down and read and hopefully get a better handle on wheel spinning. But for right now, it's pretty much me searching online, reading Ravelry threads, and looking at lots and lots of YouTube videos, and just trying to kind of understand what it is I'm doing in the mechanics of spinning and the mechanics of using a wheel. Um, the thing I'm really trying hard this week to understand is ratios, which when I got the wheel, I kind of looked at the ratio list and I was like, wow, ah, this is too, this is like too much, I can't understand this, I just want to spin. So I started spinning. But honestly, I, I kind of knew this in the back of my head, and the more I've read, it's just confirmed what I've known. Obviously, ratios can really help with the type of single that you end up spinning. So I've been playing around with that, and because I'm trying to spin a fairly thin, tightly twisted single right now, um, I knew I needed to adjust my ratio so it was a higher ratio. I'm spinning with a 1 to 15 ratio, I think that's how you would verbalize it, I'm not sure. I, I know how you would write it, so I'll put it somewhere on the screen. Hi. Never. Um, if I remember, but I'm getting definitely a higher twisted yarn. I might be actually a little too high for what I'm doing right now, but this is part of learning, right? 
Um, I worked with some samples of what I'm doing this past weekend and I'm trying to work on my drafting consistency and I feel like I've been nailing it a lot better than I have in any of the previous spins I've done. I've done two completed spins with Moreno. Um, this is a Paul Worth nylon braid that I picked with Maryland Sheep and Wool. It was like the previous year's colorways and they were trying to clearance them out. So it was eight ounces of a Paul Worth blend. I picked it up I for 12 bucks and I figured it would be the perfect practice braid. Um, and also an introduction to Paul Worth, which I hear is, now that I've been reading a little bit more about it, is really great because it's similar to Moreno, but a little bit easier to spin with. Um, so, and, and I feel like it has been a little bit easier to spin with. Um, the only downside has been it's because it's an older braid and it sat around for a while and it shipped to various festivals. It was a bit compacted, so I just had to kind of tease it apart a little bit. I'm spinning a thin single with the idea of chain plying it to keep some of the color gradations consistent. Um, I've spun four ounces of the braid and I'm spinning roughly the other four ounces. Um, I used a little bit when I was making my samples and I also lost a small portion that wasn't completely dyed. Um, so it's not quite four ounces I think. But we'll see and I can definitely tell the difference already between this spun single that I just finished the other day and when I started spinning yesterday. And just the consistency and the fineness that I'm getting. So I thought I would set up my camera so you can kind of get a bird's eye view of me spinning. I will warn everyone. I'm sure experienced spinners are going to look at my technique of my drafting my form and go, oh my gosh, you're such a beginner, because I am. I'm very much comfortable with a short forward draft worsted style spinning at the moment. But I do welcome your suggestions and critiques. Honestly, I feel like there's so much to learn and it's kind of difficult to know how to increment my learning. It's kind of a little bit piecemeal, which honestly is how I tend to learn things anyway when it comes to handcrafts. Um, but I don't have anybody here that I know that spins that can actually sit down and kind of mentor me and show me how to spin on a wheel. So I'm just figuring it out as I go along, as I do typically with everything else. Um, hi. Yes, you're going to have to go sit somewhere because I'm going to spin. Yeah, thank you. This is Maverick for anybody that's not seen pictures of him on Instagram before. He's our five-year-old mutt adopted dog. Our miracle dog, as they used to call him. He had Parvo as a puppy and was excessively sick, but pulled through. You're a good boy. And you're very good with the kids. You take a lot off of those of them. <laughs> He's a very good family dog. Um, <laughs> you see it, he's just standing for me. Um, so yeah, so let me adjust my camera and I, oh, one other note about the polywog. I did get the accelerator for the polywog so I could spin at higher ratios. Um, as is, the spinning wheel just has your standard three low, medium, and high ratios. The accelerator, I think, bumps it up to 10, I think, 10 or 12. I'll have to look at the documentation. Um, and you can adjust from there. But I knew right away that I was going to want the accelerator because I was going to want to spin finer yarns. I mostly knit with sport. I don't really knit with anything, or not sport, with fingering. I don't know why I was thinking sport. I knit mostly with fingering weight wools. Um, I don't really knit with sport weights. I'll occasionally knit with DK, very rarely knit with worsted. I definitely like my fine yarns. So I knew that would be a good investment for me. I think eventually I'm going to get the 12 ounce bobbin and flyer so that I can have something bigger to ply on. But right now I've got the standard four ounce bobbins and have been doing fine with those. Um, I could definitely fit most of a four ounce braid on one of these bobbins, um, which is, I think, useful. So without further ado, let me adjust my camera and get spinning. So my apologies about the different video quality, but my point and shoot camera's battery decided to die. Um, so that is charging right now, and I wanted to finish this video while I had a chance, so I just set up my laptop. Um, so as I mentioned, I am most comfortable spinning a short draw worsted style, and I'm doing a short forward draw. I've been tra practicing my short backwards draw, um, and I'm just super uncoordinated still. <laughs> So worsted versus woolen is um, two methods of letting twist enter the fiber. And woolen creates a more airy fiber, whereas worsted creates a more compacted smooth fiber. 
and that is what I'm doing right now. I'm basically pinching, drawing, and then smoothing down the fiber as my um, right hand thumb moves back to meet my left hand. Um, and I'm just pinching with my index and thumb on my right hand. Here's your pinky. There you go. Good job. And I'm spinning this um, Z spun, so it's clockwise. Um, my next real goal with spinning is to spin some sock yarn, which is probably a bit of a lofty goal for a beginner. But I ordered a merino nylon blend braid from Elfenvilla here in Germany, and I'm waiting for that to arrive. And I'm going to spin myself up some samples and just play around with that. Try knitting it, try different ply methods. Um, I'm really curious to just implement some of what I've been reading and um, it seems like there's a few different kind of thoughts about plying for sock yarn. It seems like three plies tend to be the most popular, but I've seen everything from... You're talking? Yeah. Hold on. Sorry, my son woke up from his nap, so he's in a high chair next to me. <laughs> um, everything from a chain ply to a traditional three ply to an opposing three ply. An opposing three ply, which is when, for instance, you'll spin two of your singles in one direction, so Z, and your third single in the opposite direction, in this case S, and then you ply all three together in S. Um, and apparently that's a popular method for spinning three flies up here. So I'm gonna just play and spin up some samples. Um, I figure this is kind of the best way to learn is to research, read about something, and then try it. And for me right now there's no real wrong outcome because I'm still learning. So even if something turns out to be not something I would knit with, <laughs> or maybe not a success, um, you know, it's still, I've learned something from it. And it's still worth, um, oops, I'm still working on spinning evenly onto my bobbin. Um, you know, it's still valid because I've learned something. And I learn best by doing. So spinning up little, little samples and, um, you know, keeping track of my methods and, um, the results I think will be very useful. But if you have spun sock yarn, I would love to hear your thoughts. Um, and, and just spinning in general, if you have any thoughts on spinning in general. So the kids are getting restless. We're getting ready actually to go on our afternoon walk right now. Um, so I'm going to wrap this video up and I will hopefully record a podcast episode this weekend. Um, so stay tuned for that. Be sure to subscribe if you are interested in keeping up with future videos. And hit the thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video. I appreciate you um, taking time out of your day to watch it. And um, be sure to check me out on social media. I am KCMarrXO on Instagram, KCMarrow on Ravelry, and I'm on Facebook. And I'll put all that information on the screen at the end of this video. And until the next video, I hope you have a great week. And I will chat with you all soon. Thanks for watching. Bye. Mm -hmm.